I'd like to focus a bit on that story in the first reading, in which David, the rightful king, seemed to be threatened or seemed to have his authority as king threatened by his own son Absalom. And there was conflict raging between David and his supporters and those of Absalom. And so in that context, <coughs> this man begins to curse David. Now, in our humanity, in that kind of a situation, I would think that the normal response would have been for David to treat that man cursing him as though he were one of Absalom's followers and get him silenced permanently, eternally, you know, lop off his head. But that's precisely what David did not do. And I think it's because David in his heart of hearts knew that he was worthy of a little bit of being cursed. That David was not perfect himself. That there was an element of truth in what the man was cursing him about. That cursing man had a little bit of window <coughs> into David's imperfection, David's foibles, David's folly. My brothers and sisters, every one of us have those foibles, have that folly, have those imperfections. And our society today, unfortunately, is very good at ferreting them out and making a public display of them. God forbid that it happened for any of us, but it could. But the point is that we do need to listen to our critics. We do need to listen to those who might curse us. Because they probably possess within themselves a little bit of a kernel of truth. And the vast majority of which, which might not be true, we can rely upon the Lord Jesus to chase that untruth into a herd of swine that goes running down the hill and drowning in the Sea of Galilee. We don't have to worry about that, though. What we have to worry about is, all right, this person's in pain, this person's angry, this person's hurt, and they're taking it out on me. What portion of that anger, that hurt, am I responsible for? What element of truth do they possess about my reality? Learn from it. Seek the Lord's grace to work with it. He will never abandon us. And then allow the Lord to take care of the false part. Allow the Lord to do some of the work of the healing of the anger and the hurt. But not to lash out. One bad tweet against us doesn't deserve a worse tweet from us. Love one another is our banner. And thanks be to God, we have a God who always loves us, who knows our foibles and our folly, who wants us to trust in Him and not rely upon our wicked tongues and our fumbling fingers on a keyboard to try to justify. Let's allow him to take care of us and we be about the work of loving one another as he loves us. <laughs>